Last year, we brought you a first look at the van that's set to revolutionize commercial electric vehicles. Many of you have been waiting for us to get behind the wheel of this van. Finally, today, we're going to do just that. This is Inside China Auto, and this is the Verizon Supervan. Yes, it's been a while coming. Thank you very much for your patience if you have been waiting. But finally, we do get the chance to get behind the wheel of the Verizon Supervan today and also bring you a bit more information about specifications on load area, performance, things like that. If you're a van driver in the market for an electric or no emissions vehicle, stay tuned because this is quite a compelling proposition. If you want the full lowdown on what the Verizon Supervan is, you can check out the video in the link above my head. But in brief, Verizon is the commercial vehicle arm of Chinese auto giant Geely, the same guys who own Volvo, Lotus, Polestar, and a bunch of other brands as well. The Supervan is their first 100% dedicated electric van. That means it's been designed with a modular chassis to be fully ready for the electric era. That means that you get super low load floors, it means you get drive and steer by wire with full redundancies in there, and you get massive customization possibilities as well. In short, this isn't just a van where they've found space to put a battery pack in there. It's a smart commercial vehicle made for moving things electrically. Now, as you can see, it is quite a streamlined van, albeit for a bit of a chin around here, a bit of a Fiat Multiple-esque waistband, let's call it. But this van does nevertheless still have a quite impressive drag coefficient of just 0.29 CD, which makes it very good in terms of energy usage and range as well. But more on those figures later. Today, you'll see that we've got two vans. We've got a high roof combi van that's with space for passengers in the back. And we've got a mid roof size van here for your standard cargo moving and things like that. Now, most of you van movers out there have one main consideration when it comes to choosing a van and that is space. So before we take this thing for a drive, let's go and have a look at that. As I mentioned before, the Supervan has been designed from the ground up to be a fully electric vehicle. And one of the advantages of that is that the load height is actually just 52 centimeters. That's a good five to 15 centimeters lower than the comparable Ford E-Transit Leader. Today, I'm gonna to be comparing this van to the Ford E-Transit Leader and the Maxus E-Deliver 9 because it is a large van and those are the kind of the large vans comparable to this one. However, I would say that this van does stack up pretty well against the standard Ford Transit and the Maxus E-Deliver 3 as well. In terms of size, the Supervan and the E-Transit are pretty comparable. In standard form, they both come in at about 5.5 meters long. You can get a six meter long version of the Supervan as well. What you can't get is the extra long versions, which you can get with the Maxus E-Deliver 9 and the Ford Transit Leader. The long versions of those are about 6.7 meters. So they're much bigger than the biggest version of this. However, the space that you get inside, the longest and tallest version of this is 13.2 meters cubed, which is only just a little bit less than that largest super enormous version of the E-Transit. Even the shortest version of the Supervan has a load bay up to the bulkhead there of about 3.19 meters, which is about 11 centimeters longer than in the comparable Ford Transit. It can go up to 3.7 meters. Apparently it's also about one centimeter wider inside as well. I'm gonna show you on the screen a few different dimensions about the back end of this van so you can check that out for yourself. Side loading is of course very important as well and Euro pallet enthusiasts will be glad to know that we do have a full 1.3 meter opening on the side of this van, the same as in the Ford Transit. But check this out, the Supervan is the world's first large van that doesn't have a B pillar. So whilst we do have a bulkhead here in the cargo version of this van, the combi version over there doesn't have a B pillar. And if you have a different purpose for this van, such as a camper van, that is an extra practicality step there where you have up to 2.1 meters of opening on the side of this van. And don't worry about crash test safety. It has been fully tested to European certifications to fully load bearing door. So something extra to consider if you're looking at the super van for a different purpose other than a cargo van. So in terms of capacity, the Verizon Supervan definitely does fit the bill, unless you really need that four meter plus load area that you can get in the largest version of the Ford Transit. But another thing worth monitoring is payload. The Verizon Supervan is certified up to 1.7 tons of payload, not including the driver and the passenger. So very comparable to the Ford Transit. However, 
you can get something on this van that I don't think any other van on the market offers, and that is payload monitoring built in. So with the privilege package, which is available here in China, you may get it in Europe, I'm not sure, you're actually able to weigh your cargo inside the van without having to weigh it beforehand to make sure that you don't do overloading. Another useful feature of this van is the V2L, which means that you can take energy from the van and use it for power tools outside. So let's say Mrs. Dorries wants you to install her bathroom but doesn't want you to use the electricity on a meter, you can power your tools directly from the van. Now in the cabin, the supervan is also a pretty nice place to be. In the cargo version of the van, you can get either two or three seats. You can see we've got two seats in here today. In the combi version over there, you can get between four and seven seats in that van. One thing that people who don't particularly enjoy our increasingly hot summers in Europe are going to appreciate about this van is that the front two seats do come with heating and ventilation. So a little bit of cool for your builder's bum crack there if you need it, which is quite nice. And you also get heated steering wheel as well, which can be really nice after a hard day's work or just on a freezing cold morning. Now you'll notice that our van doesn't have a screen up here on the dashboard, but in the combi version, we do have the 12.3 inch screen. Have to say the European versions will have slightly different screens though. So don't take anything of the cabin to be too certain just for Europe yet. Check it out later in 2024 when it does launch in some of those European countries. Nevertheless, the super van is a very smart van. Not only do you get over the air updates, which means that your van gets better and better over time, you also get really neat features such as mobile key opening, you also get remote cabin heating and battery preparation. So if it's a cold day or a hot day, you can make sure your battery is prepared to the right temperature. And you even get the ability to hand over control to somebody else. If you need to pull a sickie, you can give Joe the intern the keys and he can go and do the job for you, no problem. But yeah, I mean, the interior is fairly nice. I mean, you get quite soft materials, even on the A pillars here, it does feel quite nice. I have to say that I think the Transit is probably a little bit more practical in terms of interior space, you know, buckets and bins on there, the little tab for your laptop on here, but you get a drawer in here, some cup holders there, you get another pocket there, and you get a pretty decent sized glove box as well. We do have a start stop button, not entirely sure they're really necessary in electric cars, but there you go. Steering wheel will also slightly change for Europe. As you can see, they've kept switch gear to a minimum, just a few switches on there, a few toggles for your climate control. You also get some buttons over here for things like traction control, drive mode, and turning on your kind of energy recovery as well. And you do get a little screen down here. I think there's about a seven inch screen there for your main driving functions. But overall, it's pretty comfortable. Nevertheless, we want to check out how this super van drives. We've got decent weather, actually. It was raining this morning, but it's now nice and dry. So let's go and check it out. Now the first thing to get out of the way is the drivetrain. If you are the kind of van driver who likes to pick up all of your goods from inside the van after they've splattered all over the walls, you might be a little bit disappointed that the super van is only front wheel drive and not rear wheel drive like the Transit. Most people probably won't mind. These aren't of course race cars, but if it is something that matters to you, then you know I do have to mention it anyway. Nevertheless, the super van is a really lovely van to drive. I mean, obviously it's electric, so it's considerably quieter than most of those normal vans that have a diesel engine bubbling away just down there under the dashboard. You can hear that it's really quite serene inside here. It's really quiet. The pickup is rather lovely as well. I have to say, this is the most pleasant experience that I have had in a van ever. I wouldn't say it's lightning quick, but in sport mode, which you do get, you can put your foot down, <laughs> you've got a little bit of wheel spin then, it will go really quite quick. And obviously it's really quiet, but that torque just keeps on coming. So if you want to drive it on the highway, you're going to feel plenty of speed coming out of there as well. The biggest difference, of course, is having no gear changes. If you want to be driving this thing around a town all day and you're constantly changing gear, if that's your normal life, the super van is going to make your life considerably easier than that. Now the steering being fully steer by wire, honestly, I expected it to be you know, almost without feel completely. It's actually quite decent on the feel. It's nice and light, of course, which is great for driving around the city, but actually surprisingly more feel than I was expecting from this. Pretty good. And also, as I said, the acceleration and the braking are all by wire. So everything is done fully electric with full redundancy, which means that if one servo fails or one system connection fails, you're going to be absolutely fine because there's another one to pick up the slack. Although we've driven on some pretty smooth roads today, the overall cabin ambience is really nice in here. We have also driven over some pretty big speed bumps and honestly, this thing takes them and it's stride really well. It doesn't feel that far from your average road car. So, you know, I have to say the ride comfort, 
even the seating experience is really nice. You can also, by the way, get imitation leather on the seats in the combi van, I believe. You might be able to get them on the standard van, so you can have that sort of extra luxury if you really want it. Again, that comes with one of the packages. Now, power for the Supervan comes in three options. You get either 120 kilowatts, which is about 160 horsepower, 170 kilowatts, or the top version is 200 kilowatts, which is a tiny bit more powerful than the most powerful E-Transit. It's significantly more powerful than the most powerful E-Deliver 9. The only difference is the E-Transit does have a bit more torque with about 430 newton meters of torque, something like that, compared to 343 for the Verizon Supervan. It's essentially the same motor that you'll get on the rear axle of a Zika Double one. Do please bear in mind that all of the figures I tell you today may be slightly different in overseas markets. Perhaps more important, however, is the range, and that's where the Verizon sets itself apart from the competition quite a bit. The maximum range you can get out of this, albeit on CLTC, is 348 miles. Now, if you offset that by about 10 to 15 percent, so it lines up with WLTP, you're still getting almost double the range of the most longest range for transit that you can get, which is about 198 miles only in city driving, more like 150 in reality. This one will still do about 300 miles of range in the top version. You do get other versions, you can get a smaller battery and a mid-size battery. They do even 200 miles on the smallest battery. So the range is going to be well, basically, if you don't want to be charging all the time your van because you've got work to do, maybe you just want to charge once a week or you know, once every couple of days, the super van's going to help you do that much easier than it would be in a Ford Transit or a Maxus E-11 9. That's down to a very impressive economy of as little as 17.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now compare that to the Ford Transit, which is 30 plus, considerably better. I mean, even if you offset it because it's CLTC, even 22, 23 is quite a bit better than the Ford Transit. The Supervan also charges at 2.4C. That means that you get 20 to 80% charge in about 30 minutes. So marginally quicker than both the Maxus and the Ford models as well. So quite a decent charging curve on this van. Creature comforts come in the way of twin airbags up front, which I believe is one more than you get in a Ford Transit. You also get, of course, your ABS and your EBD, things like that. You also get rear parking sensors, and if you get the intelligence package, which is available here in China, you might get it in Europe, I'm not sure, you'll also be able to get a 360 degree camera and auto parking as well. You also get 12 other ADAS functions, Autonomous Driving Assistance System functions, which will allow you to do things like adaptive cruise control, automatic lane overtakes, and if you're driving in the city, you also get lane centering assist as well. And apparently, this van is level four autonomous capable. What that means is, today, you can't do level four autonomous driving because it's not really legal to do so as of yet, but the ability is there. I have seen test versions of this van driving around with LiDAR units on the screen, which should in the future be able to allow this van to drive autonomously around cities. Bear in mind that Geely do have, I believe, 22 satellites in orbit right now, and they're currently helping things like the Verizon Home Truck to do autonomous driving, or they will be doing in the future. They'll also be able to use that technology here with the Supervan. So the Supervan genuinely looks to be the real deal, not only a very capable van, but also a very versatile van at the same time. I mean, it does stack up very well against its competitors, and of course it is future-proofed for the no doubt zero emission cities that will get implemented across Europe in the coming years. Now I know you're going to be interested to hear about the price. We don't have any prices yet. Chinese prices have just come out. European prices will only come out later in the year. So keep your eye out for the prices on this in the future. Bear in mind by the way the Ford e-Transit starts at £48,000 without VAT currently and the e-Deliver 9 starts at £63,000. So if this can come in under both of those prices it's going to be very well worth looking at indeed. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and if you do, thank you for subscribing. We'll catch you next time.